It is doubtful that the 2020 government invasions of every aspect of life, monetary, fiscal, regulatory, medical, or whether you may leave your country, your state, or even your house, won't fully roll back. For years after World War II, the British government maintained price controls and rations, fearing what would happen if they left things like food items to the whims of the market. Rather than rolling them back once the war ended, bread rationing was introduced in July 1946, over a year after World War II ended in Europe, and it took until 1954 for all rations to be removed. Rent control in many European countries was introduced as emergency measures, but when the original arguments for their use no longer applied, the policies found new constituents and insiders to support them. Sweden levied a confiscatory top-rate tax on high earners after its 1990s banking crisis to help bring public finances back in order, strictly temporary for four years only, but the tax wasn't abolished until last year, a mere 21 years overdue, and way after the public finances were in the clear. At airports, we still hop through contorted security screenings, or at least did, until governments squeezed our ability and desire to fly. Screenings that are surprisingly ineffective at the task they ostensibly perform. Troubling new findings after an undercover operation at U.S. airports. TSA officers failing to detect weapons or explosives most of the time. Every country's political scene is riddled with examples like these. Leftover rules, a heavy and incomprehensible tax code, a bloated bureaucracy of incompetent public servants. Once temporary government assistance is introduced, or temporary taxes levied, exiting those policies angers their new benefactors and the established bureaucracies, who by the time the original emergency has passed, have found new arguments for why the larger government presence is absolutely critical. The size of government rapidly increases during an emergency, with few people able to object, and once the emergency is over, some non-trivial portion of the powers remain, never to be abolished. Result? An ever-expanding government. Politics is a game that shifts the natural and inherent relationship between human beings. Ordinarily, people in their commercial or civic engagements have strong incentives to harmonize, to avoid conflict, streamline, make efficiency gains, and reach workable consensus. They have skin in the game, bear responsibility and costs for the negative outcomes of their actions, and often simply want to get on with their lives. Politicians, involved in their sinister games, disrupt this harmony. They do not have skin in the game, at least not above the minor risk that voters will make them leave that particular office in a few years' time. They rarely suffer the consequences of their actions. They have little incentive to harmonize or downplay conflicts and routinely exaggerate them for personal grandeur, heightened self-importance, or signal their virtues to voters. What keeps this ever-growing disaster at bay is entrepreneurs innovating around the obstacles that government officials put in their path. It's individuals finding new ways to do things, of outwitting the slow-moving behemoth that is government administration, of outsourcing their processes to friendlier jurisdictions. In the 1990s and 2000s, record labels used government and laws of intellectual properties to hunt file sharers and decentralized so-called criminals for facilitating pirated music and movies, but it took the persistent work of convenient services like iTunes and Spotify to make people want to pay for music. But we do have one more thing. People stuck in the present frequently underestimate the potential for new companies to come along and disrupt existing monopolies. They see government intervention as the only way. Over time and on net, the market process that enriches us gradually overtakes the government power that impoverishes us. But during this time, we can have long periods where government power makes life worse over and above what innovation, growth, and individual ingenuity could marshal. Over long stretches of time, the ones that occupy a historian's mind, things inevitably get better. Throughout this upward centuries-long trajectory are the government horrors of the past. Wars, genocides and holocausts, slavery, discrimination, and state schooling. 
property confiscations, property denials, and environmental disasters, terrible tax regimes, monetary debasements, and regulatory mania. Over long stretches of time, what governments do or don't do is irrelevant. Everything is swamped up by the powers of compounded economic growth, entrepreneurship, innovation, cultural values, and value creation. Over shorter time frames, like our disastrous pandemic year, the banking and property market policies that led to the financial crisis in 2008, or the warmongering politicians of 1914, governments can ruin lots of existing well-being and ensure that plenty more remains unrealized. We don't yet know if last year's government power-grabbing disasters were a blip in the long-term trend, a year and behavior we can one day laugh at, like we do today about the 1961 Bay of Pigs invasion or Neville Chamberlain's 1938 Peace for Our Time declaration. Some of you perhaps have already heard what it contains, but I would just like to read it to you. We, the German Führer and Chancellor, and the British Prime Minister, have had a further meeting today and are agreed in recognizing that the question of Anglo-German relations is of the first importance for the two countries and for Europe. We regard the agreement signed last night and the Anglo-German naval agreement as symbolic of the desire of our two peoples never to go to war with one another again. Or could they be the modern equivalent of 1914? The war to end all wars, where we'll be back by Christmas is to be replaced by two weeks to flatten the curve, that unfathomably stretched into years or decades. It took Europe some 50 years to recover from that initial governmental blunder, and in many ways, it never did. <laughs> 